Yo, what's up, guys? It's Ryan, and today we're going to be making some music, um, specifically in that kind of indie, folky uh, kind of genre. I've been listening to a lot of that recently um, on Spotify, recommended, and just random YouTube playlists, and I've been enjoying it a lot, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Um, I've recorded these two acoustic rhythm tracks uh, and loaded a drum set, but that's the only thing I've done, and I've also put some compression on the acoustic guitars but other than that we're starting 100 percent from scratch um and yeah so th this is what i've got so far again it's uh or rather it's a 16 bar rhythm part on acoustic <laughs> And it just loops over and over and over again. Um, and just because I know people like hearing the theory behind it or the music theory behind stuff, um, I'll go ahead and kind of tell you what these chords are while it's playing one more time through. So we're in the key of um, A flat major or F minor. Um, and if you're a guitar player, I just have capo one and doing some big open kind of G shapes, you know. So it starts off uh, four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six. Or then right here it goes one, five over seven, six, five, four. Actually, no, it just goes one, five over seven, six. My bad. And then it goes back to the four, five, six. Yeah. So that's kind of where it's at. It's basically a four, five, six with a fancy little thing thrown in the middle. Um, so for a drum part, we can. I'm using Superior Drummer because for this type of music, I don't think there's a better drum software. Um, or drum library. Um, the get good stuff is fantastic for that, uh, like rock metal stuff, but this is not that. That's twice as fast as I thought it was going to be. But we are at 200 BPM, so I should have seen that coming. That kick is boomy. I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that, really. Um, beauty of samples. So we can just come in here, uh, find the envelope and offset, and So I'm going to want a relatively low tuned snare. Um, typically I like higher snares. Uh, that's just, that's just me. Not that. <laughs> Something maybe like that. And I might even tune that down a little bit as well. Maybe not that much. Just a little bit. And kind of have a, kind of have a, a rolling sort of thing. Need to be a little more interesting than that. So I like the kind of the generic shape. I think they just the extremes need to be a little more. It 
So maybe something like that. Potentially. Okay, never mind. I think that's a little too much. Maybe if it only like had that hit. Yeah, that that's better. And then for this part right here. Uh, I think I'll probably have to do something else for that. I'm gonna go ahead and save this just in case something goes horribly wrong. Folksy 2. <laughs> Apparently I already have a Folksy. Okay, so I think maybe every other one of these This note right here is um, pretty loud, relative.
There we go. Um, so maybe a bass. Yeah, a bass would be cool. Um, all right, so if you're new to the channel at all, to record instruments or audio in general um, into Ableton while I'm recording a video, I have to switch something on my interface, which makes it so my voice is going to go to your left ear and my instrument's going to come in on your right ear. It's something with how Windows and Microsoft uh, sound cards work with ASIO, the Ableton software. Um, so, just so you're not freaking out when I'm now in your left ear, um, let me switch the inputs to my bass uh, pedal board. And then let me tune real fast. Because nobody likes an out of tune bass. So, let's see. I think maybe just like on the root notes might be a good call because like holding it out when everything else is pretty rhythmic just makes it feel like nothing's going on you know yeah I didn't like that that maybe yeah like that um, I'm gonna stay in this setting real fast because I want to record a guitar so
Just like a, a lower drony kind of thing. We get a metronome. something like that tonally. So maybe something like that. I'll keep it pretty low in the mix, you know. Um, pan it mostly to the left. Pan this other one mostly to the right. Um, take my overdrive off so on the four
So maybe something like that if my nail <laughs> won't catch on the uh, string. Maybe add a little bit of drive back. something like that. Let's drag that. Oh my god, I forgot what key we were in mid mid take. So maybe something like this, and this is turning way more country than I started with, but you know, I'm personally pretty okay with that. So this is what it sounds like. a little bit of that. Um, then for the bass, I'm going to give it a little bit of grit. take could have been better but for right now it's fine oh wait I've got this this reverb thing that I hardly ever use because I forget I have it but it came in some like plug-in pack I bought a while back but it's uh, called twang storm it's a spring reverb this is a hundred percent of what just so you can hear kind of like what the spring reverb is about. some like my hands moving on the strings noise you know uh, the scratching all right so then I think a uh, 
a good place to go with this is definitely in Oregon. Um, so let's draw out this MIDI real fast. Starting the. I'm, I'm just gonna do bass notes first. So that holds and it does it again. So for the four, let's try that, do that again and again. So for this part, um, I'll go ahead and <laughs> that's some extreme jazz. Then it goes one. Five over seven. So the five is an E flat. To the six. And then that's like kind of acting as a passing tone. Or uh, like a grace note of sorts. So let's. I think maybe actually an octave up might. I only got like half of it. <laughs> Alright, maybe not. I think there I think it might be too jazzy, which uh I hate saying. <laughs> yeah, I think that first the four major seven is too not diatonic. Or it's diatonic, but it's uh too out there for this particular song. and I need to figure out how to uh there we go <laughs>
make sure that any notes that are sustained are like being held through like this a flat that's just being held the entire time essentially um because it helps it without hearing all like the clicks of switching notes I like that a lot. I like that keys part a lot. Ooh. Yeah, didn't want to delete that. Guitars. I'll go to make a bass group. something with the drums cutting out right there feels super dumb so I'm just gonna have it keep doing that snare roll for right now right, and then I'm gonna automate this thing the rotary speed just kind of relatively arbitrary I'm just going to come down to nothing, uh, cause, so when it loops, it's still at the same spot. Um, it spent 34 minutes on 16 bars, but it's whatever. Um, I want that one, this one to have way more body. Or take up more space. And maybe that reverb is what I need.
right, so that would repeat um, for an intro, I'm thinking. Just go ahead and add 16 bars. Um, delete all of that. We could have the, I'm gonna go ahead and consolidate that. Didn't think we'd have to think about it, but cool. Um, could have the acoustics start it. Have the tambourine. And then the kick drum could come in. No snare. Kick drum would come in halfway through. How's that? How long is that? Hold on, it's a. And then leave out the last kick. Have all this lead in stuff. Drum fill would be better. Drum fill would definitely be better. First hit of this would have to be bigger. Perhaps a a washed out crash symbol as well. Like almost a gong gong, but not quite. Because um, I, I know that Superior Drummer won't give me what I want. Some of the symbols aren't divided into like acoustic. Yeah, let's try this, but like tune it down a lot. Nope. Maybe I do want a gong. Maybe something like that is actually what I wanted. It's 
the quietest gong hit I've ever heard though. So actually that's exactly what I wanted. So let's add a ton of reverb. chorus would be um, Yeah, maybe something along those lines. I need that click up <laughs> pretty good though, because I can I lose it. Um, so let me plug in real fast. And then create new acoustic channels so I can record. Then I'm gonna switch the interface over. Um, turn off all my effects because they sound awful on acoustic. Um, oh, I was playing all of those parts without all the guitar parts without the compressor on. That's why they sounded kind of weird to me. Um, oh, well, I'll, I'll compensate in post. Because the, the compressor on electric does exactly what I want it to do, the deep six, but on acoustic right now it, it, it squashes it way too much for my personal tastes. Um, so I haven't been using it and I forgot to turn it back on. Oh yeah, there's reverb on the, I was like, where's that reverb coming from? It's off on my board. Um, I forget what I was. Yeah. Oh, wait. It's recording over that, too. I don't want that. that quick up so I apologize if this is gonna like kill you not suck for a second. One more 
time. One more time. <laughs> maybe, maybe four more times. for right now but I'm still not super happy with that take So I'm going to go ahead and, while I'm already kind of set up to record guitars, I'm going to go ahead and do the guitar parts. Um, and uh, bass as well. I'm going to do bass next. Switch over to the bass DI. So, and the theory behind this uh, chord progression is, it's a A flat major still, but it's going five, two, four. Um, so yeah. This one going from the kind of super, uh, what's the word? Just monotonous bass line to a more held out one. I missed a note, but that's coming. It's coming in hot. Also, just uh, because I'm I've done this before, and some people have asked, or I've I've not went over what gear I was using, and then people ask me, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. For acoustic, I'm using a Taylor 214 CE. Um, for electric, so far, it's been my Sir Antique T, um, through a the compressor was off, but it's usually a Walrus Deep Six, um into a Bondi sick as which is like a clon light gain sort of thing um, through the timeline for some slap back I'm pretty sure through the big sky um, for reverb into a Kemper with running a like a fender sort of amp profile the base is a Fano JM4 uh, with a bass equalizer cutting out a lot of the highs making it pretty subby um, into a dark glass hyperluminal compressor through an Aguilar tone hammer DI box straight in. Um, or it's going through the through the Kemper, but the Kemper's acting just as like a a cable lengthener basically. Um, 
So I'm thinking right now we'll go ahead and get some drums down uh, before we add the other guitars. So make an eight bar loop. Maybe this will be. Not that hard for sure. Part of me wants to go to like a bigger part, and part of me feels like it should die down for a little bit. Oh, I need that gong hit. <laughs> Without everything covering it up, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Maybe if we just put a... Oh, yeah. There we go. Just keep the same. That could be a cool pre-chorus, actually. Yeah, so. That bass part was sloppy, but oh well. Right here. One, two, three. Four. That's not going to be a corporation at all because I hate that. Eight, four.
All right, I think I'm actually, I'm gonna record the electrics for the pre-chorus, if that's what this is gonna be. And then I'm gonna call it a video, because it's been like an hour, and I've got work to do. Um, so I'm gonna create two electric tracks. Switch my Kemper over to my handy dandy fender. Um, plug my pedal board in, grab my guitar, and turn the compressor on so it's a tone I'm used to. Alright, I'm gonna switch the interface. So now. See, that's the tone, yeah. Because, like, without it, this is, like, the quietest I can get. But with it, that's the quietest I can get, so it's got a lot more. It's got a lot more beef to it. So I, I might actually re-record this part right here. This part's fine. I think. Actually, they, I think they're both fine now. After I like tweaked them a little bit. this and try to figure something out. Uh, see, these are all like either a solo or like a lead part. For a pre-chorus it needs to be a little down. Maybe 
something like that. I'm kind of a fan. Let me get a click going, actually. That's a little loud. Something like that. Um, keep it relatively down. Pan it left. Um, about 30, just like the other ones. And for another lead part. Yeah, I might just actually literally just have that, just to fill up some space. Like, barely audible. Throw in a, uh, an Echo Boy. Grab that same twang storm reverb sound for this. Man, twang storm is like one of those things because, like, without it, I just like the way it feels a lot. It's super subtle, but I really like it. I'm gonna do the same sort of drum build into this. This one might need a little bit more reverb, just a little bit, and everything has too much reverb on it probably. And just a little bit of
passed out right here. I was all over the place. Kick needs a little more high end. Actually, yeah, I can just. Just needs to cut through just a little bit. Yep. I could go ahead, go ahead and uh, compress the bass. Something like that. Um, just wanted to do some small mix things, um, just to get it to a point where I don't open it and instantly hate it next time. So yeah, uh, this turned out way more country than I thought I was going to, but I'm super okay with that. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of this kind of music, so not even a problem a little bit. Um, I feel like there was one more thing I was like, make sure you do this before you stop, you know? Navy was at a piano. I, I was thinking about that for a while. Um, so we're going to try this again. I'm just going to copy paste this over, make sure, yeah. just for some mid-range in here.
yeah, I have to I have to call it right here. Um, that bass fill right here. I need to play that differently, also. But I'll do that next time. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about anything, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Um, and I'll see you in the next video, which will hopefully be tomorrow, uh, working on this track. So, yeah, I'll see you then.